All right, I have a walk-in freezer that is taking a long time to get to temperature. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do a little stress test. So I brought it up to 15 Fahrenheit and I'm gonna see how long it takes to get back down to three Fahrenheit. So it's taking like 40 minutes. So let's go do our checks. See what's going on. Both EVAP fans are running. Now I was doing a maintenance here so I know everything's clean. But yeah, no ice on the coil. And that's why I spent 40 minutes waiting for it to get the temperature while I was doing the maintenance. All right, everything checks out here. And let's go take a look at the unit. And look at that, sight glass is low. So I'm gonna do a leak test. So the breaker's all tied into one with the coil. So what we need to do is get this suction pressure up. As you can see, we only had one pound pressure on the suction side. So what I'm gonna do is take off this solenoid coil and we're gonna activate, uh, we're gonna open the coil with this magnet. And we'll see if you can hear the click here. Listen closely. Or listen carefully, not closely. All right, so we're all good. The system's gonna try to equalize now, which is gonna give me more pressure on my low side so that I can do my leak test here. I'm trying to avoid not using nitrogen, but if we need to, we need to. So you can see we're already up to 38 PSI. So all I need is around, yeah, 52, that's good enough. Uh, let's go start our leak test. All right, so we'll start with the condensing unit. We'll go hit all our uh, usual suspects here. Uh, this unit's pretty new. Uh, it's probably like a two year old unit or three year old unit. So it's probably got a slow leak somewhere. So let's go hit up all the joints. Everything that was done by the installer. And then we'll hit up all the factory walls and all that. Here we got our high pressure switch. In the back here, we got our low pressure switch, which likes to leak sometimes. But I'm not getting any indication of a leak so far on the condensing unit. Like I said, pressure is kind of low for the suction side. Let's go hit up our coil now and see if we can find anything. So distributor, TXV, I'm going to hit up all the joints that the installer has sweated in. Make sure they didn't miss anything there. And just take our time, be thorough here, see if we can find anything. Um, I did hit fast forward here, so it looks like I'm testing this thing super quick, but I'm really not. I'm taking my time, being thorough, hitting all these U-bends. As we know, these evaporate coils love to leak, even though it's only about two years old, two and a half years old. All right, so left side's good. And I'm just gonna hit up this solenoid very quickly and a Schrader. So we have our access port there. That's what we use to test our superheat. Left hand side is looking good. We'll finish off on our solenoid braises. No action, no action yet. All right, let's move on to the right hand side of the coil. Hit up all these U-bends. Sneak behind this control board. All right, I'm always looking for any signs of oil. I don't see any signs of oil, okay? So at this point, I'm probably gonna have to crank it up with some nitrogen now. So we'll recover the refrigerant, leave a trace amount of, amount of refrigerant in the system and we'll crank her up. But let me just go back here and look at that. I missed one of the Schraders. So this is kind of like an outdoor unit, so it's weird that they would have an access port here. But as we can clearly see, She's leaking from here. So let's go ahead and take the cap off. Confirm the leaks in there. We're gonna do shoot some soap in there to confirm that the leak is in fact here. But that would make sense because the rest of the system is not picking up anything. And definitely the leak is right here perfect all right so let's shoot some soap in here confirm the leaks there even though we know it is 
Just always confirm with the soap. I always like to. I want to visually see where the leak is. Especially if it's like on an evaporate coil. And look at that bubble right away. And here's a better angle. Look at that. Schrader leak. So we're going to go ahead and get this changed out. So we're going to pop on our core removal tool. And we're just going to hit fast forward here. All right, and we're going to swap this out hot so we don't got to remove any refrigerant. And we're going to make sure we do not go below zero PSI. We we'll always make sure there's pressure in the system so we don't have to pull a vacuum again. All right, so we're just going to pull this out here, close our valve, pull it out. There's the Schrader that's bad. All right, and we're going to pop in our new Schrader. So what they want us to do with the new Schrader is they recommend we put oil on it, which I've done. We're going to pop it in. And then we're going to go torque it because that's also what they would like us to do and make sure it doesn't leak. So we're just going to force this down here. Tighten it up. I'm not going to tighten it completely because I want to put my torquing tool on this guy here. And let me see, get a better angle for you guys here what I'm doing. And pretty straightforward. Yep, just screw the Schrader in. Open the valve. All right, so we're all good. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and torque it. And you heard that click. Tells us it's torqued to the proper spec for the Schrader. Spray our bubbles in there. We'll let it sit there in a little bit. All right, so far no bubbles, so far so good. All right, so now, let's go get this unit charged up. So we're at one Fahrenheit, okay? And let's go see what our pressures are sitting at. So 82.2 Fahrenheit ambient. That's important because we want to figure out our head pressure. And you can see here we're charging with 404. And we have 18 and 224 PSI. All right, so we're getting suction pressure of 18 PSI. So in order to figure out what the pressure should be, um, we're going to take our box temp and we're going to subtract 10 to 15 Fahrenheit. Depends on how our TXV is adjusted and our superheat. I'm just using this to ballpark it. Okay. So if we take our box temp, which is 1 Fahrenheit, and we subtract 10 to 15, that's going to give us minus 9 Fahrenheit to 14, minus 14 Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's go look that up in the PT chart. Minus 9 to minus 14. So minus 9 to minus 14 will be right here. And we're looking for the suction side. So we're looking for 20 to 24. We're looking for 20 to 24 PSI. Okay, we're only getting 18, so we're well within the range. We're close. We're just a little bit low on the suction. Okay, let's go check out our head pressure. So to determine our head pressure, all we're going to do is take our ambient temp, and let's add 15 Fahrenheit for the condenser split. So we had 82. We add 15 Fahrenheit, and that's going to give us 97 Fahrenheit. So let's go take a look and see what 97 gives us. 97 will give us 226 PSI. All right, so we're only off by a couple PSI here. So uh, the charge is not crazy low, and that explains why this evaporator coil is not freezing up. But we're still in the range where it'll operate, but it's just taking forever to cool down. Okay, so let's go charge up the unit and then check our pressures and then do a stress test and see how it goes.
All right, so let's start charging here. So we're going to start charging liquid through the suction side. So we're going to go nice and slow, take our time, no rush here. Nice and easy. We're going to watch our sight glass. That's going to be our indicator. Okay. This area is heated even in the winter time, so we don't have to worry about winter charge. Okay, we're going to charge the sight glass and then I'm going to add a couple ounces after. All right, so we're just gonna hit fast forward here and we're gonna charge it. And then once the sight glass is full, we're gonna wait a little bit because we're gonna start bubbling again. Then we're gonna do that two or three more times till there's no more bubbles. All right, so wait a couple minutes. We got bubbles again, so we're gonna clear the sight glass one more time. And we're gonna go from there once it's completely cleared. Let me try to zoom in here so you can see. Still got a little bit bubbles going on and sight glass is finally cleared and our final pressures here 18.6 and 235.5 and if we go look at our box temp now it is minus four, which is minus 16 saturation. All right, so let's go back to our PT chart really quickly here. So we're still at 18 PSI, but our box temp has now gone to minus four. And then if we subtract 10 or 15 from that, we're gonna get minus 14 to minus 19 Fahrenheit, okay. So let's go see how that adds up in our chart here. So minus 14 to minus 19 puts us at 17 to 21. So 17 to 21 PSI and we're getting 18. So we're right in the range now. Perfect. And then our head pressure. So we are now getting 234 PSI. So we're getting 97. We were looking for 226. And if you looked on my gauge there, I was getting 99 Fahrenheit saturation. So if you just focus on the saturation temperatures, you don't even really need a PT chart. So if you looked here, I was getting 99. If I subtract 15 from that, I would get 84 ambient. We're right in the area, okay? We can be plus or minus a little bit on that. So we're good. And then, all right, and then also, if you look at our saturation temperature on my gauge, it was showing minus 16 Fahrenheit, okay? I don't really care what the pressure is. 18 PSI, that's great. I wanna know the saturation temperature. It's minus 16. So based on my calculation, I need to be from minus 14 to minus 19. Okay, I'm at minus 16, so I don't need to check my PT chart. Okay, that's why it's very important that you check your saturation temperatures. Understand them. Focus on the saturation temperatures and not the pressures. All right, last thing to do is a stress test. So I got the temperature up to 17 Fahrenheit. Let's start a timer. Let's see how long it takes to get to freezing. Zero Fahrenheit. All right, we're at five Fahrenheit now, so we dropped 12 Fahrenheit. And we've done that in just under nine minutes. That's really good time. But now it's crunch time and we're at zero Fahrenheit. And within 15 minutes, we've dropped 17 degrees. So we have passed the stress test. The unit is dropping in temp as it should be. Now the last tweak would be to do the superheat, but we have some uh, questionable product in here and I'll explain why, but yeah, I'm not gonna be doing the superheat today, unfortunately. All right, so as you can see, we did the stress test there. I was in the middle of the maintenance. That's why I was able to wait the 40 minutes to see if it came down to temperature. Normally, I would start the stress test, and if within like 10, 15 minutes, it's not dropping how I would like it to, I would not wait 40 minutes. I would be jumping right into it. But as you're doing the stress test, you'd be checking things out. So obviously, the sight glass was really obvious. Okay, the pressures were right in a kind of a funny zone where... They weren't freezing the coil, so the pressures were decent enough to cool the box down, just not quick enough, but not enough to freeze that coil up. So the pressures look like they may be decent, but until you did your calculations, you saw from the head pressure was the real test. 
that it should have been a little bit higher. And then obviously the sight glass was the big indicator. So the last thing that I did not do there was I did not adjust the superheat. Okay, they keep like all the dead skunks and animals in there. It's, it's it's really disgusting the smell in there. So what happened was the night before I saw that there was a leak and they emptied the box for me to do the maintenance. Everything had to go back in the box for me to repair the leak the next day. So they asked me if that was fine. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be working on the condensing unit anyways. I don't need to go inside the box. So the next day when I came back, did that repair, I couldn't adjust the superheat. Um, I do want this superheat to be a little bit lower from the calculation, just a rough calculation. I think it's around like probably like 12 superheat, 10 to 12. I want it to be closer to six to eight, especially at that temperature. So, uh, we're looking to feed a little bit more liquid through the valve. Okay. To drop that superheat. So I did explain that to the customer. Uh, they didn't want to empty the box. They said they can wait till the next maintenance. It's been running like this, um, since it was installed probably two, three years ago. And the pressures are decent where we're not getting hot gas or liquid coming back to the compressor. So I'm not too concerned about it. It's more of tweaking so that the box can cool down a lot quicker. Um, and we don't have such long compressor run times.